Honk! This is a guanabana, a chirimoya-like fruit. It is huge and spiny and weird. Hey guys, it's the Luminostic and family. This is my partner Enrica. Hello. And our son Nagual Phoenix. A few of you guys have inquired about what it's like to live in Ecuador and what our lifestyle is like here. So we decided to make a vlog today. We're gonna go around town and go to some of the shops and we'll show you guys some of the exotic fruits that we have uh, that are local, as well as natural landmarks and wild plant medicine species. So hit the like button, share, subscribe, support us on Patreon. This mouse nearly met its maker on the back porch this morning. This stuff is grass, and this is why we mow our lawns with donkeys here in Ecuador. This is the view of the Andes from the back side of the property. Every day about this time, the storm clouds start rolling in. This is the river in the backyard and this super sketchy bridge. Maybe we'll go check that out in a moment. And the family. These rather large trees uh, with the papery, long, shredded looking kind of bark is eucalyptus, which smells wonderful and grows all around the property. And uh, we actually use it to make our rape. This is the sketchy jungle bridge that I had mentioned. <laughs> uh, basically, it is just a tree that has been bisected and uh, you have these sort of cables to hang on to. I actually don't know what this tree is called. If I can find out when I go home somehow, I'll try to look it up. Uh, I will add some text to the video, but isn't that amazing? Here's some perspective on these thorns relative to my hand. There's another very common fruit here. This is the maracuya, a uh, type of passion flower. These are not yet ripe. Um, this one is ripe. You notice that it's all wrinkly and sloppy juicy. The uh, seeds in here are the edible part. Incredibly tart, sweet, delicious. Absolutely amazing tropical fruit. Here is one of our cacao plants, which is the source of chocolate. And these are quite large, almost mature, roasted and split. The uh, pithy pulp can be made into the most delicious juice that I have ever had in my life. It has unsurpassed antioxidants. Um, one of the compounds is only also found in blue-green algae. Of course, there's a tiny bit of caffeine. Uh, it increases serotonin production. We all know how wonderful chocolate is. This is an immature Rolinha, Rolinha fruit. Um, Enrica's personal favorite. Unfortunately, this one has got a ways to go. Looks like a little armadillo or something. This massive succulent behind me is a pitahaya. Um, it has beautiful flowers, which unfortunately are not in bloom. This is the fruit. Inside, we have a seedy pulp that is about the texture of cucumber, maybe a little bit softer, and very difficult to describe the taste, almost like a tropical grape. Of course, the number one export here is the banana. We have several species. Um, I just wanted to show you guys, I had never seen one before I moved here, the banana's flower which a lot of us are unaware of because all we get in the United States is the uh, seed pod, actually. Uh, but these are edible as well. The indigenous make some dishes with them here. Okay, so this is a bunch here on our farm that is ready for harvest. You can see that it's already starting to yellow and a bird has been munching on it. Um, 
these bananas, which do not grow here, they, these grow on the coast, are actually my personal favorite. They're called Oritos, and they're sweeter and more creamy, so I wish they grew here, but these are also very delicious. Oh, look at the camera, quick! Serpiente Verde is trying to eat Nagua. Oh, luckily it's just a guava bean. Um, this is a very sweet fruit with a sort of uh, white pith inside. It's a favorite of the local children. Uh, there's another flat variety. It's said to taste like either cotton candy or ice cream. Also ubiquitous, almost as common as the banana, are these giant bamboos. Uh, as they grow, they shed these outer layers. Uh, it's like a molt for a tree. Um, and you have to be careful not to touch them uh, or carry them when they're covered in these tiny little hairs uh, that's a very toxic irritant. I've seen people have terrible reactions. Uh, but if it's green and, well, they're still a little hairy, um, I don't react much, maybe because I have the guitar calluses, but you do have to be aware when you're walking through the bamboo. It appears the coffee flowers are in full bloom. These are some coffee beans. Uh, we actually do roast our own coffee from time to time in a big wok here. And it is absolutely the most fantastic coffee that I have ever had in my entire life. One of my favorite views of the Indian peaks from amongst the banana trees. And over here we have some, you can barely see them, but they are coffee trees. Uh, and of course, we have tons of different varieties of oranges, a few mandarins. What are these called again, Enrico? Suriname cherries. Suriname cherries. We have some papayas, which are getting huge, as you can see. This is another uh, staple fruit of this area, uh, the tr tree tomato, or tomate de arbol. Uh, it's very popular in salsas and uh, juices and here is the inside it's quite an unusual variation of tomato that grows on trees and here is a pomegranate tree in the front yard somehow it's blooming and also fruiting what are these called again enrico suriname cherries suriname cherries this is an extremely venomous spider that is probably going to try to kill that cricket any second now. Here's a small coca plant, the infamous source of the cocaine alkaloid. <clears throat> but here's a nice surprise. I didn't think we were going to find any naranjitas fruiting. Uh, this plant has very irritating small hairs. Um, we knock them off and then rub them around in the grass to get all the hairs off. And they're not very sweet, so usually a little bit of panela is added, but they are phenomenal once they have been sweetened just a hair. This is one of our favorite locally made delectables, an Italian style sausage called Enrica. Coppa. Coppa. Absolutely delicious, marbled and fat. We pair it with Enrica. Camembert. Camembert. It makes an absolutely delicious snack that Nagual is determined to get his hands on. <laughs> so for, for dinner this evening, we prepared what might be a, a typical, simple Ecuadorian uh, traditional dish. Uh, we have some boiled yuca, avocado, some jalapenos, some of the local variety of bean. And this is an interesting type of corn. It's called choclo. It's a uh, Peruvian corn uh, that was grown here traditionally as well. It is from the Quechua word and it means fresh maize. And another personal favorite, mandarin trees. I think we have maybe Four different varieties. All of them are excellent. Some have more seeds than others. 
but as you can see there's no shortage we're totally overwhelmed in citrus generally just referred to as mora all berries in ecuador are pretty much mora uh, i assume this is like a type of black raspberry uh, it grows wild all over the place here i cannot tell you the relief that i have felt after hours collecting psilocybe cubensis in the peaks in the tropical sun when i see a half a mile of these things ripe and full of water it's always as if the doors of heaven have swung open <laughs> there are no mangoes at the moment but it is in flower this is the local wild variety the endogenous mango it is a huge tree as you can see it takes up an enormous amount of space back here looks like we have some young mangoes here which is pretty exciting so here we have zapote blanco and in english it's called a custard apple and this one is very unripe so we're not going to be trying it today but it does have a really great consistency um hence the name which is custard apple and it sort of tastes like creamy vanilla custardy pudding type thing it's pretty great okay and here we have granadilla which is like the maracuya that we showed you earlier is a uh, passion fruit but unlike maracuya these are very sweet but as you can see it almost looks like a uh, frog egg sack that you might find <laughs> floating in a pond very very strange extremely delicious definitely one of our favorite fruits and it's also mm -hmm. um, only <clears throat> a dollar for seven of them or something one mm. of the sweetest fruits here. And so what is next? Oh, Inca berries. Yeah, these are called uvias here. Uvias? Uvias, yeah. Okay. Which means like little raindrops, basically. And, yeah, in English, in Inca, Inca berries? Or golden berries. Golden berries, yeah. And these are pretty tart, and they have very complex flavor. They're also very delicious. And super foodie. Mm-hmm, definitely. Yeah, a local yellow mango. Yes, most people know what a mango is. And <laughs> these are very delicious. Yes, and they are much less expensive here than in the United States and Europe, obviously, because they grow everywhere. And what is yeah. this monstrosity? This one? Mm hmm This is a white carrot, or in, in Spanish, zanahoria blanca. It has a, a lot of flavor. Uh, well, how would you describe the flavor? Oh man, it's like a cross between a carrot and a parsnip. Yeah, yeah, I would yeah. say. Okay, okay, yeah, like a cross between a carrot, parsnip, potato. Uh huh. Um, very flavorful and quite filling. And what is this weird, this funky is, thing this here? This is a noni, and some people know this as a superfood, which it is. Um, and also it has a very foul smell and taste. Absolutely horrendous. It kind of smells like uh, like cheesy cheese, kind of thing. cheese and vomit, maybe. Yeah, but yeah. apparently it is extremely good for you, so people uh, <laughs> still go ahead and eat it or drink it. Mm -hmm. um, so okay, and the next one we have is yuca. This is a a staple here in Ecuador and many Latin countries. Very very filling. Um, it's sort of like a white carrot, but but starchier, mm -hmm. and they eat it all the time. <clears throat> a lot of the restaurants serve um, fries with uh, lots of different types of seasonings, and ahi, which is a um, sort of a salsa that everyone makes here differently. So each uh, cook has his own unique spin on what ahi is. Okay, and so we have a local coconut, a different variety of maracuya, local grapefruit. And what joker put this thing here? That's not a fruit or a vegetable. That's one of those hallucinogenic, entheogenic mescaline cactuses. Looks like a San Pedro. The coconut comes with a handle, which is convenient when you're carrying it home. They are pretty tough creatures. A little bit pink when you first chop in there. Inside, uh, delicious water. 
And since they're young coconuts, the flesh is really, really soft and kind of slimy. Wonderful. And here we have some king mandarins. Doesn't appear that they're super ripe. I guess this one is. They're huge for mandarins, as you can see. And are they delicious, Enrico? Yes, sir. Very good. I had a juice this morning. You did? Mm -hmm. How come I didn't? Well, you were sleeping. Oh. These are sweet lemons. Uh, we'll get a review from Enrica in just a second. Yeah, they don't taste like too much, but they're like really um, thirst quenching. <laughs> so they're they're not bad. Okay. <laughs> I have no idea what this thing is, but it is so epic and gigantic that I thought it was worthy of being included. And here is an orchid blooming on our walkway. A wild orchid. It's always great. Here is what we call a living fence post. In Spanish it is porotillo. You'll and notice that all of these trees along this row are the same type. And it's very practical because if you want another fence, you can just cut off a branch and stick it in the ground and it will grow very rapidly. And it will produce these beautiful Fibonacci flowers. And another personal favorite, mandarin trees. I think we have maybe four different varieties. All of them are excellent. Some have more seeds than others. But as you can see, there's no shortage. We're totally overwhelmed in citrus. There are no mangoes at the moment, but it is in flower. This is the local wild variety, the endogenous mango. It is a huge tree, as you can see. It takes up an enormous amount of space back here. So this plant is the Inca berry in these weird little paper lanterns. You find a little yellow berry, uh, very high in antioxidants, definitely considered a superfood and very common here in Ecuador. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please click the like button, share, subscribe, support us on Patreon, and keep your eye out for part two, town, hostels, and natural landmarks.